And... Well, I guess we can start now. It's seven. All right, let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for popping by. Uh, this is Nicholas, or Mr. B, if you, if you prefer. Um, today, we're going to be talking about jazz arranging and like the structure of arrangement and some simple arrangement techniques you can use to um, arrange better. So first and foremost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick PowerPoint, a quick PowerPoint that I made for a previous live stream, but I think it still applies here and it's a good refresher for all of us. So let's all go through it. This title slide says understanding arranging and your first arrangement, but we can kind of ignore that for now. Now, okay, official best before we start. Huge thank you to Resonate Music, who is running these live streams for us. Our Resonate Music aims to provide free music lessons for students in underprivileged communities. Um, so definitely make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where this is running on for simple tips and tricks. And if you want to donate, there should, there's a link in the description for our GoFundMe. Fantastic. Let's get along with it then. All right. First thing we need, we need to remember, what is arranging? Is it like orchestration? What is it, right? So let's, let's go around to the basics of arranging. Arranging is taking a song and making it your own. So we're covering it almost, right? So for this example, let's use La Vie en Rose, a pretty popular song. Give it a listen right now. original song great song and here we have a video of me some self-promotion i know this is me doing a piano arrangement of the song let's give it a listen enough to get an idea of it. As you can see, I arranged the introduction to make my own introduction, and I changed the melody a little bit to fit the piano more. So that's arranging in its most basic form. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking more about big band arranging, and this is another great example of arranging. Um, this song is called Still Alive from the video game Portal. If any of you have ever played it, or if you're 8-bit big band fans, you'll definitely recognize this song. So let's give it a listen. Let's give the original a listen right now. This was a triumph I'm making a note here Huge success It's hard to overstate my satisfaction Aperture science We do what we must because we can For the good of all of us Except the ones who are dead, but there's no sense crying over. Oh, you get a pretty good feel of the song right there. Now let's head over to the 8 bit big band's arrangement of the song. This was a triumph I'm making a note here a Huge success It's hard to overstate my satisfaction I 
but your science We do what we must because we can For the good of all of us Except the ones who are dead But there's no sense crying over every mistake So then you can very, very, very clearly tell that those don't sound like the same song. They're arranged very, very differently. And that's, that's what they aim to achieve. They aim to achieve it as if it was a song by Frank Sinatra, arranged by Nelson Riddle. So as you can see, that is what arranging is, right? Now, I can hear you saying, what's a more practical example of arranging, right? Oh, I can make my song sound like Sinatra songs. Big deal. What's the, what, what's the real, the actual, you know, the real, why would I arrange a song? In other words, what's, what's the point, right? So this is an example of arranging in film scoring from the movie Ratatouille, one of my favorite movies ever. Let's give a listen to this first song, Le Festine. All right, so you get an idea of that song. It's a very French feel. Now, let's listen to this next song. This one's called Wall, Wall Rat from the movie. I waited. It's the scene. Let's skip ahead to when the song starts. All right, you gonna listen. Ready? Two, three, one, two, and boom. Sound familiar? Time I've been underneath Paris. Wow, it's beautiful. The most beautiful. So, you hear right there, they use the same melody there to emphasize the change in scenery. That's a, and they see they arrange differently instead of it being kind of fast, it's much slower with high strings. Now, here's one more example. It was a great night. The happiest of my life, but the only thing predictable. Make sure you listen really closely in this one. Is its unpredictability. Well, we had to let Skinner and the health inspector loose, and of course they ratted us out. The food didn't matter. Once it got out, there were rats in the kitchen. Oh man, the restaurant was closed, and Ego lost his job and his credibility. But don't feel too bad for him. He's doing very well as a small business investor. He seems very happy. How do you know? Yeah. See what they did there? They also arranged it in a different style. That way they had the accordion playing this time. So that's, that right there is arranging. That's the best, that's the best example of arranging right there, how it's using a practical concept. All right. That's all we need for now. Now, let's get into it. If you want to learn more about that PowerPoint and everything I talked about, I've done two, two of these lessons previously. So I encourage you to, after this lecture, of course, go back and find them on the Resonate YouTube channel and give them a watch. Or if you have any questions, any, any questions ever, just drop them in the live chat right here and I'll answer them as soon as I see them. Sounds good? Fantastico. Let's go. If you go to the Google Classroom link I've got up right here or enter this code, You'll see I have the PDFs for this, if you'd like to look along on your, on your computer. But otherwise, you can just follow along on here. That's totally okay. But for now, let's give a listen to this first arrangement I did that we're going to be analyzing today for some techniques. All right? This is called It Had Better Be Tonight or Melio Stasera. We're going to listen through it all the way through once, and then I'm going to go back and we're going to answer, answer some questions and talk about some of the things I did. Sound good? All right. Let us give it a listen. And it might be loud, so be careful.
arrangement one of, my, one of my personal favorites which is why I figured let's go through it today all right so first off let's look at this piece by piece all right so right now we open with this nice unison sax I'll bring out the piano keyboard here you can see this whole section is unison throughout the saxes right it's unison and as soon as we end it it goes to something that's not unison we go into chords the chord theory using with the C here. So we're using the C7 chord as you can see right here. C major 7. Just C7. We're getting some tension in here, see? We're bringing in we're bringing a different kind of chord. We're bringing in an augmented chord as you can see. If we stretch it out we have this chord, this, this. We have the added 7th um, or the added 14th, 15th if you want to go that far. Um, we added 7th, which is cool. We got a unison note here, and then a chord, and then unison, and then chord. I find that when you alternate between chords and unison and chords and unison, it gives it an interesting feel. So let's listen to just the saxes right now. Go over there. And I'll... You hear that, right? There's an interesting kind of texture there, which is really cool. And then you can see, I just I kept that same kind of ostinato or whatever over here, back into the chords. We have these big brass hits, this big brass hit right here, which is nice. And now this kind of arrangement is special because it's, it's what we call a vocal feature arrangement, which means the instruments don't really have the melody too often. They're accompanying the vocalist who's singing the melody right here. We'd be singing Amelios da Seda. They'd be singing right now. Have a do The rest of this is just orchestration. I wanted to have just the rhythm section going here. Right? So I have piano cued and then guitar and, ba and bass written out and drum cues as well. Now here, this is a fancy thing. This one. As you can see here, right now this staff is the alto sax one staff. But now we change to flute. Because why not? We can change to flute. In professional jazz band settings, there, as you know, or as you, you may or may not know, there is no woodwind section. There is just the sax section. So there's no flutes, no oboes, no clarinets, no English horns, no bassoons, none of that in a standard setting, which is why the sax players sometimes have to learn these instruments. So in this case, you see, I want I would like a flute player to play right there. So I have the alto one player put his alto sax down and pick up a flute and then play this little line right here, along with the trumpets. So you can hear right there that the trill, which is kind of nice. You can see I have, I have him stay on flute for this other lick too here. And then he goes back to the alto sax. I'll make a whole video about that eventually, hopefully. I'll end up making one about woodwind doubling, when to use it, why you should or shouldn't, all that stuff, which is cool. That's for the rest of this. We're just going through like this. Just kind of, especially in Latin music like this, I find that punchy trumpet hits are always a success. You can, you really can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with big brass hits. And then here we change the pace here, you see. We're going to a much softer. We have the um, string section playing some lush chords over top. And then simple movement of the kind of middle bass, I guess, in the trombone section. And then a nice little counter ballad on top. The... It's always nice. And then we go back here. We have pad. We have what's called um, uh, chord voicings or pad voicings in the strings in the sax sax section because they're just holding chords while the vocal sings. Strings enter. We have a nice little trombone, little interlude here. It's kind of hard to see. 
I am sorry about that. But yeah, so that's a bit better. So you can see we're kind of building up, building up, building up, boom, and then a big fall right there in the brass. Let's go back. Now, what I did right here, as you can see, uh, right here, I have the strings playing tremolo, which means they're going. They're playing it like really quick, and it lets them like do a forte piano. You can start start loud and then go soft, and then build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it like that. All right, listen, because because this G7 here is a tension chord in A flat major. And if you go A flat major, a G minor seven should be a G minor seven. What we're doing here is we're making it a G major seven, which is interesting, right? It's kind of, and this helps build some tension. So Now I stole this rhythm right here from the original recording because I was too lazy to write something new here. I didn't steal it. I used it. And so now we have this bum 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 boom bum boom 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 bum boom 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 boom. Which is kinda nice. And the trumpets come in for only a few of those hits, which is an interesting touch, right? So it's not too overpowered. Bum bum boom. Bum bum boom. That's always cool. And then now we have what are called shakes for the brass. So it's like a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like what it sounds, except not really. It's kind of like a, if you're a brass player, you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't play brass, totally okay. It's just kind of like, it's like a fancy trill, except it just kind of goes at different intervals. So instead of going from like, see this G, instead of going from G to like A flat, you'd go up to the next harmonic. So you'd be like, it'd be something like that. And then I have this nice little entry back. And now, ba da We have some trombone stuff, trombone stuff. Ba ba ba. Nothing fancy here. Some rhythm section stuff. Now, this is where the fun part comes. Listen up. Watch. Let's listen. Boom. Right there. See right here, we change keys. We go from A flat major, well, G, we go from F minor to G minor, which is interesting. This is called a modulation. It's used a lot in arranging, and we're going to talk a little bit about it right now. So let's give it. Let's give this a listen right now. So that was a modulation, as you can see. It changed the key and then keeps going in that new key. Which gives the song a kind of, it lets you repeat stuff while still being new and original, which is really cool. So you can see we did change keys. We'll talk more, more about modulation when we go to the next song, which is really cool. All right, but for now, it's just a modulation. It's just changing keys, helping you reuse parts of the song without having to write something new. So that's always cool. We we'll go back here. This section is interesting because what I did was I have these half note triplets with the strings, and then I also augmented that with the brass sec with the trombones here too. So that's always interesting when you kind of have different sections playing on different beats. Let's see here the violin, the, the strings. Let's solo the strings right now so we can listen to that. Seconds. The new score mixer is always a little bit of a pain in the butt. But fear not. Um, there, let's slow that. That's interesting. And now let's slow the brass section from that same spot. The trombones, sorry, I should say. So 
You can see they have similar rhythms, but different, and that's what makes them interesting. So let's listen to them both together right now. So that's the cool part right there. See, they, they work together while doing different yet similar things to give it a cool effect, right? This part is still the same as before, nothing's really changed. Except now we have an instrumental verse right here, an instrumental verse in quotation marks, not really a verse. Where it's just trumpets and trumpets. So now we go into this weird kind of half melody here, where the, the bass clarinet kind of gives us a nice little touch right there. Let's Sneaking feeling almost. Wait for it. No. Boom, 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 boom. And then from right there, we jump into this really cool swing section. Boom. So that's the swing section. And now we do something really, really, really cool. This is where you pretty much just, everything that's playing, you just get rid of everything except for one rhythm section instrument. And there's a name for this, it's escaping me right now, I'm not 100% sure what it is, which is totally okay. But, so when you take something and you only leave like the soloist and one other instrument, it's like, it's weird, it's like everything just leaves right there. Like, let's listen to it. So that's pretty cool, right? It's kind of like we have all this stuff going on and then boom, it just goes away. That's always very cool. You can do that with bass, with a bass. You can do it with drums too, but the drums keep everything moving. So it's kind of, you keep drums in, it's kind of weird. If you drop drums and drop bass and drop everything and just have like a pianist or just the bass going, it's a very cool effect. So that's a tip you can use. I want to write that down actually, that's pretty good. All right, and then our next page. Trombones come in with some light voice things and the bass joints as well. Then we have a build up. Saxophone and Venus in with the guitar. Boom. And now we enter the solo section. That's why it sounds kind of weird. There's no instruments playing right now, as you can tell. Right? I have chords put in here for every instrument. Alto 1, tenor 1. So any of these players would take a solo right here, right now. Trombone 2, trombone 2. Any of these players would right then take a solo. They would go and they'd improvise. And that would be there. That would be it. Right, and then that's the end of their solo. And then we have more shakes. And then second solo for another instrument. And then, boom. We're back to the same thing. That's the cool part. We have this build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And then right here, I put, I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says, just play a bunch of really high notes. And that's all you have to do. Because that's what I want. I just want high notes. Just just imagine, like, if I can bring it up an octave. And let's give it a listen. Obviously, that didn't sound awesome because I was just making it up right now. But if you have four people doing that kind of stuff, it's going to create some very interesting sounds. Very interesting, very high, like, very high sounds, which is sound. Which is what I'm going for in this section. And then this ending right here, musical really lets me down right here, which is a shame. Because it's supposed to be, I'll mute the lead track for you all so I can show you. But, um, let's give it a listen again. It's supposed to be a B flat, I keep forgetting. It's like this, it's not supposed to be perfect like that. 
Sounds really good in a live setting, but played back like that, you kind of lose it. So that's this whole arrangement. What did we learn from this arrangement? Let's take some notes. Let's look back. We learned modulations are a cool way to extend the piece without being repetitive. Solo sections are a thing in, in jazz. Um, we learned about cutting out everything except one rhythm section player right here. And what else did we learn about? Let's keep going. Pad voicings. Using different sections together with similar rhythms right here. That was very cool. We learned about, a little bit about woodwind doubling, which was cool. All right. Score number one, finito. Gives us a pat on the back. We're about halfway through right now, which is, like, super awesome. So high five, everyone. Super duper cool. Now let's head on to the next score. This one is Guile's Theme from Street Fighter 2. That's a good one. So now I'm going to start it, and then... After it's finished playing through, we'll talk about it. All right? So I'll give it a listen together. <laughs> Wow. So that's that arrangement for you. Super duper epic. I think it's the right word I would use. So let's look at it one, one by one. We have the trumpets playing a chord right here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Right? Here we have baritone sax holding a nice low A. Always a cool trick. Piano, guitar cued, some drum notes written in. And what I have here is because when the, the bass is by itself, it kind of gets lost. So I'm going to cue it in a different instrument. I had it on trombones originally, but 
It's really hard to play trombone that fast, you know. I'm go go. I can play it on piano or on my keyboard pretty quickly, but on an actual trombone, it's almost impossible. So again, I throw it on the tenor sax. You have that low B flat key that they can use, which is cool. And then now I have this. So that's that beginning part. And let's go here. We have the saxes harmonized, two part harmony. I figured I didn't want to go all out, bust out the four chord voicings for this one. And here what you can see I did was I wrote some chords in the trumpet section, which I have learned from experience is a no, no, you don't do that. This is a trend I made a while ago. So I figured I'll show it to you and tell you all, don't do this. Don't do this. You don't want to write, you don't want to write like backings for trumpet. You can, but it's just, it's going to sound weird and out of place almost. Trumpets are used to playing loud and in their face. If we go to this section here. All right, that's going to sound great because the trumpet players, they're trying to be loud. When they're trying to be soft, it's going to sound all weird. Anyway, this is Axis Melody. Don't play trump don't put trumpets as choir backings. That's a no-no. Um, here, we here we have a cool guitar lick. It's just the same chords. It's a, it's a C minor 7 chord. Got a nice touch. And then I have trombones and tenor saxes playing this accompaniment thingy, which is super cool. It's always... There's a list of good combinations of sounds, and I think tenor sax and trombone is a very good one. They blend very nicely. So does alto sax and trombone. There's alto and trumpet, so does tenor and trumpet. A lot of them blend together, but a good starting point is like low with low and high with high. So altos and trumpets are generally a good bet. Trombones and tenor sax is usually a good bet. Let's keep going. through a lot there. Let's go back a little bit and go through it all again, shall we? Let's go. So you can see, look, I told you, I have tenor saxes and trombones doubling, and then altos and trumpets doubling. It's a good sound. You can't, you, generally, you can't go wrong with something like that. And now, as you can see here, I have the saxophones playing the melody, as well as a trombone trio here. I left the bass trombone out, but look at this. We have the trombones playing as well as the saxes. So that is a very nice blend, I find. So you can see we have this up an octave, then we have these down an octave. So if I just solo the saxes and the trombones, you'll hear really it's an interesting sound. It's not really interesting, it's a good sound. Interesting sound. I like it personally. You have that big wide spread I and mean, when you have trumpets filling in this middle section here Which I had done and I shouldn't have but Anyway, you have a situation like this where everything's being filled in the middle and you have the low end and you have the high end And the middle fills stuff in. It's great. I think it works really well in that context So we have that and then a nice little sax thingy here and then we, we circle back to this same motif right here. Right? And right here, we go into a tenor sax two solo. This is interesting. Usually when you're giving sa solos to the saxophone section, you give the, lead, the first player a solo. So you'd give tenor one the solo, or you'd give tenor or alto one the solo, or sometimes even a baritone sax solo because they're the only, only member of their section per se. But I said, I'm not going to write for the alto. So I'm not going to give it to tenor one because with my band, the tenor one already has a bunch of solos. So I figured 
I'll give Tenor 2 a solo. Why not? Give them a chance to take a solo. So solo, 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 solo. Right here. For solo backings, what you can do is you can just leave only rhythm section. That's generally a safe bet. And then it's just the four of them playing. Five of them, sorry. Tenor sax is soloing right now. We're gonna have some other some change in scenery here. And when you're writing these kinds of parts without the solo, you wanna try and write as much as you can without writing anything. And now you're saying, what? What on earth could that possibly mean? That makes absolutely no sense. And to a certain extent you'd be right. That's kind of kind of gibberish there. But it's very interesting because let's see. Right, right here, in this section, I'm trying to fill up as much sound in the background as I can without being too forward. So let's listen. So as you can see right there, I'm trying to write as much as I can within the same section. You can see that's an interesting touch. Let's say I have a, I have a saxophone solo here. So I'm writing backings in the saxophone section, which is very cool. Because by writing these backings, what you're doing is you're not only making the song more interesting, is you're giving the soloist some things to build off of. Like you can use some of these rhythms now on syncopated beats. You're kind of, when you're in this stuff, you want to try and give the soloist as much to work with while not getting in his way, him or, his or her way, sorry, I should be saying. You want to give them as much freedom as you can while giving them as much to build off of, right? So right now, I'm giving these rhythms in and I have this nice little run here. And here, I'm just, give, I'm just doing chord tones in a simple beat with the trombone. <laughs> the cool part. Right here, I brought in the baritone sax to come in and give a little bit of extra punch to the low end. Because what I was doing here, as you can see, I was writing very high for the trombones. As a trombonist, I really like writing for high trombones. I think it sounds like super cool. Like I have a high D right here, which I think sounds great, especially with that low C from the baritone sax. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Now, as you can see here, I kind of have the band coming in very loud here, which is interesting because you want to try and give this a little some time to breathe and also keep going with his licks so that when the, when the band cuts up, you can see he's been going the whole time. So there's that. That's the solo section, remember. You want to try and write as much as you can by writing as little as possible. Go on, first person to put that in the uh, YouTube live chat gets a shout out right now. If anybody says what I just said about solo sections, you get a shout out if you drop it in the chat right now. One of the three concurrent viewers. All right. Sounds good, let's go. Keep going. I'm awaiting that message. But now, as you can see here, we're going back to our, our beef in the beginning. But there's no saxes or no big brass, it's just trombones here. Now, what's this? A key change into C sharp minor. Now, a good way to key change, there's three main ways. Well, there's two main ways you can key change. You can do what's called, you can do a you can do a lame key change, or you can do a sudden key change, I should say, or you can do a, a build-up key change. I'll show you examples of both of those momentarily. But this is an example of a sudden key change. As you can see here, rather than do some kind of funky chord progression to bring us in, I just, instead of going up to the C, I went to a C sharp and in the bass glyph. And right there, you can see we're already in a new key, and that's interesting. And so the first time these saxes wouldn't be playing, and there we jump at one. So let's give let's give this whole build. And I'm wondering here is I'm, key I'm changing keys while also giving a build up to go back. So it doesn't sound like I'm doing the same thing again, even though I kind of am. Right? Because if you look back, this section is the exact same thing as before, except pitch shift up one semitone. So let's give it a listen right now. There. So 
let's talk a little bit more about this build up right here that I did in the saxophone section because it's 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 so cool and it, I have to share it. All right. So what I'm doing here, I don't know how to describe it really. We start with it, we're literally building notes. Write as much as possible without much writing. Gloria RM and Nick from the Discord server. Shout out to you, my guy, for paying attention. Fantastic. Fantastic. Super awesome. All right. Now let's get back to this. We're going to talk about this. Right here, we have we start on one note, okay? One note held by all the saxes. Uh, and we're, we're, we're building up. And then now we build a chord, a bit more of a spaced out chord. And then now we're, we're into full out chords and full volume. Which is like, if you listen to just the saxes here, I'm gonna solo them right now so you can all hear. Boom. And then when you double the lead right here, that's an octave up, which is like really hard to play, but sounds epic. And then boom. We're into E major. Or C sharp minor, sorry. You know, when I brought this chart in for my band to play, everybody like freaked out at me because while well, modulations are very cool, generally beginner, beginner intermediate players will hate anything with a sharp in it. So nothing with sharps in it. Like look, if I take this at a concert pitch, altos have seven sharps and trombones have four and trumpets have six. So yay, that's always fun. So remember when you're modulating, if you want to keep it playable and somewhat sight readable, try not to modulate into these keys. Although I find when you modulate to a funkier key like E or B or I don't know, G sharp, not really G sharp, F sharp, I think it sounds like really, really super duper cool. Like epico cool. So we have E major. It's the exact same stuff, just in A major. Once again, remember, Writing stuff for trumpets. Don't do that. Don't do that. Not a good thing. Right here. This was fun. I was bored. And I figured, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to put it in the trumpet section. So your trumpet player, if they're really good, they'll be able to play it. But it won't sound that good. I just put it in there for listening effect when I was doing the playback. That's, That's like ridiculously fast. That's not happening anytime soon. Right? Same stuff, same stuff, same stuff. We change it right here where I wrote what's called, I wrote an ending in. So this is like a real arrange, arrange ending right here because I took, what I did was I took the melody and I kind of built it into some kind of cadence, right? So let's listen. Right? And then instead of doing, instead of holding it, you know. We went from that and we just built a big old chord on top of that. Ba, 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 ba. Right there. So now there's a. So I think I have all the parts here that I can show you all. Yep. Let's go to the very end. Let's talk about trumpets first. Trumpets are the easiest to write for. Trumpets, on the end, these big ending chords, when you want to write a big, powerful chord that just screams like. Ba, 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 boom! Like, like, it's like. When this when the superhero stands up from behind like the thing they just won, it's like ba -bum. trumpets. A good call is close voicings, which means all the notes are as squished together as you can make them. Right there, see they're all squished. Right, so let's listen to the whole thing with just trumpets. Super cool, just punchy, just boom in your face. Now we go to saxes. The lead is the same, just an octave down. And we do some drop voicings here. We just spread out the chord as much as possible for dramatic effect. Okay. Give it some nice, give it some nice spread. The saxes, they fill the gaps between the trumpets and trombones. And we go to the trombones here, to the end. We have a really big chord right here. Look at this. We have A, C sharp, F sharp, and D. It's huge. This is like a massive spread. And then the saxes fill in the gaps in between here. So listen to this. Now that sounds, now on their own they all sound good. When we put them all together, it 
it's like the biggest chord you can ever imagine. So saxes, drop voicings, trumpets, close voicing, trombones. Trombones, make sure they're beneath trumpets and sometimes even below saxes you can do. Yep, that's just it. Guile's theme, baby. That's it. All right, now comes the time where I've left some time here where you guys can suggest some arrangements that you'd like me to look at, and we can go through one of them together. So if you'd like, drop any arrangement that you've been listening to and just throw it in the chat. Like it could be a Hal Leonard jazz arrangement, or it could be like an Alfred music arrangement, or it could be one of your arrangements, and we'll go through it right now. And if you don't want to, that's totally okay. I have a bunch more of mine we can go through. Just figured I'd, I'd ask you guys if any of you wanted to... Um, if any of you wanted to suggest any arrangements we should do. So, it's your call. Nobody says anything in one minute. I'll move on to the next arrangement I have prepared. Bum, 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 bum. We need some Jeopardy music, but that's kind of, that's copyrighted, that's all. So let's pull up the next arrangement we can do. Let's look, let's look through here. Is there anything interesting that I want to do? Let's go. Are these any good? Here's a good arrangement. Good arrangement, arrangement. Can we go through the chameleon arrangement? Yes, we Canada. This Canada's free. This Canada's awesome. Yes, we can. Let's find chameleon in here. Um. Chameleon or jazz combo. This one is more of an adaptation where I took this person's arrangement and kind of adapted it for the ensemble. So if you're an 8-bit big band fan, you would see um, Charlie Rose and their band leader adapted in standard music arrangement of the Field of Hopes and Dreams for their ensemble and added some other orchestration. So I kind of did that here. All right, so we start out with a, a bass intro. Now the brass and drums enter. Give me one second here. I didn't hide that. I feel like it should be hidden. Wrong one. guitar melody here you can hear. There's some piano comping. Melody in unison with all the other instruments. same bass line the whole time. Now that changes, we have a nice change here.
Now we loop back to the same thing, right? After this little section, we jump back. I'm gonna pause it here so you can talk about this solo section here. So as you can see here, there are no backings because this is a very small ensemble. You only have one of each instrument. Whereas when, when I have in Giles theme, if we go back to the solo section, we have four trumpets, four trombones, and four saxes to write backings with. Whereas there, we have one of each, which is much harder. Right? And you want to generally write within sections. So it's harder to write backings for these smaller jazz combo scores right here. So generally, it's just the rhythm section keeps going, and the soloist solos, and that's it. Let's keep going. Back to our same ending. That's the whole arrangement. Especially with these smaller ensembles, it's much harder to arrange because you have much less flexibility. Right? You're very, you're very um uh, stuck. Because you can't write for a full sax session, you have three saxes. You can't write for a full trumpet section, you have one, not four. You can't write for four trombones, you have one trombone. So it's much harder to arrange for these smaller combos, right? Feel free to keep suggesting arrangements. We've got until eight, but I don't mind going a little bit longer if you guys, until, until eight my time. So we have about 10 more minutes. So then any other scores you'd like to go through quickly, we can go through. So perhaps, I don't know, some Hal Leonard stuff or some other stuff. If not, let's sort of, okay, we'll quickly go through one more score of mine. And then that will be all for today. Not for now, though. Yes, Chameleon. Chameleon was super awesome. Super fun to adapt. As you can see, especially with this smaller stuff, it's very hard to harmonize. That's why a lot of it's in unison. Because, like, when you have all five harmonized at once, it gets very tricky to harmonize. Do I have Herbie Hancock stuff? I do not have much Herbie Hancock stuff, unfortunately. No. If you want something, go ahead. Alright, sounds good. Let's go with my one last score. This one is... The Penguins of Madagascar theme. I used to watch this TV show as a little kid a lot. Loved it. One of my favorite songs, like, of all time. It's theme songs ever. So let's give it a listen. That's the whole arrangement. It's a short one. That's why I picked it for right now. So right here we have this nice bass and piano bass intro, which I like. We have it right there. While the drums are in a nice fast beat. And right here I have a harmonized sax solo, or a half harmonized, see? This part, let's bring it in concert pitch. These are all the same note. And right here we go to a chord. But um, a chord, but um, a chord, but um, but up, boom. Very cool. Let's listen to just the sax right there so we can get a true idea of what I was going for. You hear it? There's 
there's that but unison unison and then switch to a chord is like an interesting shift <laughs> my fingers haha <laughs> yeah especially for this bass this bass part's not too bad this bum 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 ba -da -ba -da -da. it's chromatic so it's not horrible thankfully but, all right and we go here trumpet unison i didn't want to harmonize this because there's not really chords it's just kind of like notes so i gotta take it off solo here real quick This part is cool. Now, when I recorded this and put it on my own personal channel, not here, um, I actually have to take out these jumps right here, though. Because it's really, really fast and really, tri really tricky. I figured if I spread it out, maybe it'll be easier, but it's really not. So, I think in practical situations, you wouldn't really play these like that. So, generally for trombones, don't write really fast 16th notes. They're really, really, really hard to play. So, I wouldn't write those if I were you all, but hey, do as you wish. So, let's give it a listen again. Same thing right here. Now we go to a solo section. Right? It's just rhythm section here, the piano, bass, and drums. So there's that, you see. I'm giving the solo something to work off. I'm giving them this. See, so what they're going to do is they're going to try and use these rhythms from the bass line as well as these rhythms from the rhythm section in there. Right? Solos. Which is, which is really cool, right? Gives them a nice kind of. And then it's the soloist and then band, band, ba bum. Right? So there's that. Ba 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 solo section. This nice little ending right here where it's just a big high trumpet chord. Just bah! can't even sing that high, but just a big bang, bang, boom. boom. And we have this nice little, like we have the trumpets taking the center stage with their forte piano, and this nice little cheeky bass lick kind of just jumps in. Boom. Wow. One of the most fun tracks I've ever had to write. And it's only like 30 seconds long, and I had to I stretch it out into like a, a good minute and a half, at least. But you know what? I think that's going to be it for today. We've gone through three, four songs so far. So everyone, I thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you learned something. Um, please tune in next week when we do this again. We're going through some other arrangements. Feel free to suggest some... Uh, arrangements to me as well either put them in the comments of this or email them to me um, I'm gonna put my email in the chat right now so that you can email me any suggestions you have any feedback anything at all uh, if you're looking for private lessons check out resonatemusic.org um, we provide free music lessons for students in underprivileged communities. So, yeah, that's awesome. It's super duper cool. Anyway, I hope to see you all here next week. And on behalf of every, everyone at Resonate Music, I thank you for being here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Adios.